This is Thomas Pridgen, playing at Bentley's Drum Shop in 2015. Thomas isn't actually alone. He's playing with another guy. You can hear that guy clearly when Thomas switches drums. Dude, keep playing. And there's definitely a gap between them, without even talking about chops. Leave that out for now. Here's the other guy. Here's Thomas. Other guy. Thomas. The difference between them is what I'd probably call groove or pocket. And there are a lot of people talking about pocket. Here's the thing about pocket though. Most of the advice I've heard on developing it has been wrong. The conventional wisdom, why that doesn't track with my experience, and what to do about it ahead. But first, channel theme. When I was in college, Marcus Baylor, now of Yellow Jackets fame, sat in on a jam session when he was on tour with Kenny Garrett. Marcus played simply and cleanly, mostly leaving out fills and focusing on groove and pocket. And his was deep. After Marcus played, drummers for the rest of the night tried to imitate him. Heck, drummers tried to imitate him for like the rest of the month. I'm not excluding myself either, I tried just like everybody else. We'd play way simpler. We'd wrinkle our brow and put on our best jazz face. And we'd try to play the type of beats Marcus was playing. And none of us sounded anything like him. It was all a bunch of crappily grooving imitations. Why do I bring this up? When I was in college, the conventional advice for playing pocket was play simpler, focus on your feel, and play along with recordings. Have you received similar advice? On the surface, it makes sense. If you're trying to play too busy, you're not gonna groove. If you wanna learn a great feel, you need to listen to and play along with recordings of the greats. Here's the problem. I tried that for years, and I still wasn't developing a good pocket. I was more like the drummer in that Thomas clip, trying super hard and making the appropriate facial expressions. Then, when I listened to the recording, rushing, dragging, or just generally not playing in the pocket. Then, in frustration, I tried something 180 degrees different. And, to my astonishment, it worked. Exactly what I tried ahead, but first... I want to talk about meditation. We will focus on being mindful. Don't tune out! I promise I'll tie this back. I tried to write the lesson without this part, and it just didn't track as well. I also made a New Year's resolution that I wasn't going to dumb my stuff down just for views. But I'll still try to make this interesting. Just hear me out. I started meditating about eight years ago. Why? I wanted a way to be less reactive. Blah, blah, what does this have to do with drumming, right? Okay, when I first started, my goal was to free my mind from random thought. I'd sit there and try really hard not to think. Then, when I realized I'd been lost in thought, I got mad. This went on for years. Sit down, try not to get lost in thought, still get lost in thought, get mad. Sound familiar? Then I listened to a Sam Harris podcast on Dzogchen meditation. The self is an illusion. As I realized the crucial seconds to get to the point are ticking away, here's why that's important. Trying hard to meditate misses the point. The key was making an insight that changed the way I looked at things. It was an insight Harris could deliver in just a few minutes of coaching. To actually have the center drop out of experience so that you just, rather than feeling like you're on this side of things, looking in, you're as though you're almost looking over your own shoulder, ha appropriating experience in each moment, you can just be identical to this sphere of experience. And people could regain that state of mind, not by spending hours on the cushion, though that also has value, as I'll discuss later on, but simply by remembering the insight. Back to the drums. The realization I had about playing pocket was similar. It's not about trying hard, it's about seeing clearly. It's about training yourself to notice a few things that once you notice them, you can't not notice them. So, what were those things I had to notice? 
Insight number one, timing. Sure, we all realize timing, or time as I called it in music school, is important. But my revelation was more specific than that. First, there are not one, but two types of time. There's the type of time that ensures you end a tune at the same tempo you started it. This other drummer playing with Thomas has that type of time pretty decently. But then there's a different kind of time that has to do with the consistency of the distance between your subdivisions. Like, listen to just one bar of this other guy playing. Here's my quick, exaggerated impression. It's rushing and dragging within the bar. By contrast, listen to Thomas's playing. The distance between the eighths and the sixteenths is consistent. I call this microtime. But wait, you say, don't many drummers play with a lilt? A little push-pull that's not completely precise, but which grooves like hell? Of course, some of my favorite examples are Brazilian drummers, whose sixteenths have a swing to them. And the Della beat. Speaking of which, got a leash and a wish just to rock you, miss. So make a militant move. Intentionally imperfect subdivision can be nasty as hell. Which brings us to my second realization. Insight number two, suburban feel. By suburban feel, I'm not talking about mega church drummers. I'm talking about kids from the suburbs who don't have early exposure to, let's say, a dance culture. Because it turns out that there are imperfections in the subdivisions that make them feel better, and certain imperfections that make them feel worse. If you didn't grow up in a community that valued dance, or playing in church, and you haven't played very long, it's far more likely you've got this suburban feel than that you secretly sound like a samba troupe. Okay, so white kids can't groove, is that what I'm saying? If that was all, you didn't need to watch this video. What I learned was far more subtle. Suburban feel pushes and pulls in predictable places. And by becoming aware of those tendencies, you can start to hear yourself as you really sound. Here, from a video I did last year, are the tendencies. One of them is losing track of the larger pulse when feeling upbeats. Those same brain tendencies that cause us to rush upbeats tied over the bar line often cause us to drag downbeats. So instead of a, a one E and a two E and a three E and a four, it's a little bit more like a swung beat. Okay, crux of this video. Stop spending hours trying super hard to groove. Instead, I'm going to prescribe a very specific protocol. Afterward, I'm going to address some questions you probably have, like, so I shouldn't play along with recordings? And you're saying it's not important to spend time on this? That's ahead, but first, the protocol. Week one, record yourself playing with a metronome. Listen back. Note all the spots you're rushing and dragging. That's the baseline. Now, week one, you're gonna work on the tendency to rush upbeats. Use this exercise from my time lesson. I'm setting the metronome here for 85 beats per minute, and I've got the eighth note subdivision on, and we're actually going to feel this on the off beats. So we're gonna feel it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'll explain more about why later, but for now, let's just play these two exercise beats I showed you. Week two, record yourself again. Notice any improvement. Week two, we're gonna start listening for the places we drag predictably. Use this next exercise from my time lesson. Metronome on eighth off beats.
Week three, record yourself again. Notice any improvement. Now you're going to work on the tendency to rush and drag kick notes because of the physical limitations of playing the kick drum. Here's the exercise. A good example is if you're thinking about a samba instead of something like It'll tend, if you're listening to a beginner, to sound more like It's subtle, but if you're listening to a recording that you're trying to play along with, you're going to notice that that's on the early side. I've got two exercises for this. The first is a 16th note metronome offbeat placement, or an eighth note depending on the quarter note pulse. Two, three, four. The next is actually changing the beat you're playing by filling in some sixteenths on the hats and then, if necessary, taking them away. So instead of... You could use a sticking like three, four. Finally, week four. In week four, we're going to train you to lead the band rather than following. Here's the exercise. If you're feeling really advanced, you can also use a placement once a measure, like this. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three. Here's the crucial insight I was missing. I wasn't hearing myself the way I really sounded when I was playing live. Things were distorted. I'd feel like I was playing in time, though not really grooving in the moment. But then, listening to the recording, I'd discover I'd been all over the place. Now it's time to address those questions from before. Specifically, are you saying nobody should practice pocket or groove or play along with recordings? Of course not. If you want to hit a free throw in basketball, you have to practice. Thousands of reps. But there's a difference between basketball and drumming. The basket. You can see clearly how close to making the basket you are. Did you brick it? Did you bounce it off the backboard? Or was it nothing but net? But imagine you were blindfolded and wearing your plugs. How much less effective would all that free throw practice have been? And that's what we're doing in drumming. We're going to keep trying hard to groove without spending any effort trying to see ourselves clearly. So guys, that's the lesson. I hope you've learned something from this. And if you dig what I'm laying down and you'd like to go way deeper on this topic, I recommend something called the 80-20 Coaching Course, which is kind of my premium coaching program. We only open it a few times a year. But if you'd like to get on the list to hear about the next time we're opening and get a completely free gateway drug in the meantime, I recommend you click the link below the player and enter your email in on the next page. I'll send you three completely free videos that I assert will improve you playing more in the next three weeks than it's improved in the last six months. Dudes, it's been real. Always enjoy these. See you back again next week. We grew up on the west side. West side. I'm just trying to live my best life. You're damn right. Mind if I close this? <laughs>